We live in a unique period of human history and computer science history. One of the things that makes that unique is the amount of data that's consumed and generated each day. In 2018, 300 hours of YouTube video were generated and uploaded every 60 seconds. And also it's estimated that the amount of data generated by the world up until 2003 was about 0.5% of a zettabyte. And then by 2013, that amount of data was generated within two days. The, as humans, it's hard to be able to make sense of all this data. The ones and zeros that a computer stores would be almost impossible for us to understand that. And so we want to visualize the data, be able to make sense of it, make sense of trends and understand it in a compact and unique way that we can make decisions or be able to understand the strengths and limitations of things that we do in data science or machine learning. So it's used across all phases of machine learning and data science, both from the early phases, just to be able to cleanse data, understand what data is available, be able to understand the strength of a prediction and how well that's going to perform over new data. Now, there are many careers within uh, this area. And as we look at some of those careers, we think about something, uh, a career like a data analyst. Now, a data analyst is going to take data and present it in a way that helps people understand it and take action based on that data. And then we also have a data scientist. Now, a data scientist does everything that the data analyst does, but also some additional advanced statistics and machine learning. And this typically means more programming and some complex algorithms as well. And then you also have data engineers. And the purpose of a data engineer is really to manage the flow and storage of that information that's coming into an organization and be able to make it available for the data analysts or also the data scientists that need it to be able to uh, create these predictions or create these graphics. So today we're gonna to be talking specifically about data visualization and how to do that in Python with just a few lines of code, be able to create some very nice and complex charts to be able to understand both uh, the data itself, each one individually, or how it's correlated to other data columns as well. So we can see uh, both the trends of the data, box plots, outliers, but also as you change one variable, how does that affect another one? So let's jump right into it. Uh, come to the course website and to this concrete case study that we're gonna use. Okay, so the concrete case study has two parts to it. One is data visualization, and then we're gonna do regression and classification. First, come to the course website. Uh, this is apmonitor.com slash PDS. And we'll go down to the uh, visualize link right here underneath data engineering. So go ahead and just select that and it'll bring up the data visualization and exploration as we talked about previously. Okay, so we're gonna go through some of these examples. You may need these packages right here uh, to be installed. So the very first thing to do is when you go into your Jupyter Notebook, just go ahead and, and make sure some of them are installed. Uh, you're going to want to check especially Pandas profiling if you have just the standard Anaconda. Uh, distribution that one may not be there so let's just go pip install pandas profiling and then when you run it it will try to install it and uh, you can see that it's already satisfied along with all of its dependencies there's an important note here if it did install any packages you may need to restart the kernel to use the updated packages so it's a good practice to just uh, restart and clear output. And then uh, what you could do is just come up here and comment that out because you only need to do it once. But uh, any of them that aren't installed, you can do that with pip install from one of your cells. 
Okay, the next part is this introductory exercises uses simulated data from the temperature control lab. Uh, but if you want to generate your own and you have a temperature control lab, here's the code that you can use to do that. This one takes about five hours to generate, so I recommend skipping that and uh, just use the data that's right here. So we're going to load this data in. Uh, this is some steady state data. It makes a change in the heaters and then waits for it to come to steady state. And it was done all of these times. And these are just separated by commas. All right, so just coming back here, we can copy this or we can click the get code and then copy the link and then uh, have the load, okay, and then hit enter. And then it will put the uh, code in there for us. So you can either copy it here, copy the link, do the load, and it'll um, load it in. If you have HTTPS, it may have a problem with that, so just try HTTP. Okay, so here we have uh, data head. I'm just gonna remove the print statement, so it formats the table a little bit uh, uh, nicer. And we can also use the tail, okay, to look at the last part of the data, maybe the last 10 rows, for example. Or if we go to head, uh, we can look at the top 10, or if we leave that out, by default it just does five. Okay, and then if we uh, come down, we can also see that you know, we want to describe the data as well. So I'll just do data dot uh, describe and there's a some statistics about the data we have 120 data points the mean value for each of those standard deviation quartiles and min and max so that's a great way just to be able to look at the data we can also plot it uh, just to a very uh, easy way to generate uh, the a plot of the data is just data dot plot and it will plot all of our values. If we wanna just put these on separate uh, axes, uh, separate subplots, uh, then we just do subplots equals true. And then it will generate each of those on its own subplot. If you wanna make it a little bit bigger, uh, you can just do fig size, figure size equals, and then you can put in some dimensions here. Okay, just to make it a little bit bigger, especially if you have a lot of data that you're trying to, to look at, or you can filter it down. Uh, let's say I just want to look at Q1 and Q2, um, then I can just select just that from the list that I put in here. Let's see, uh, there we go, plot, and then it just does Q1 and Q2. And the nice thing is it puts a legend in there and, and then the dependent uh, value. In, in this case, I don't have an, uh, an index. If I had time or something like that, then it would plot it with respect to time, but that's just sample number. Okay, so there's our basic plot, but we can do other types of plots as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and try some of these with uh, different kinds of plots. All right, so if I just did data and then I do plot and then uh, kind equals and then I can do something like uh, a box plot, okay, just to be able to show all of the Q1, Q2, T1, and T2 with the quartiles, uh, min and max, uh, and then also show outliers as well, which is a really nice way to be able to visualize the data and be able to see where there are outliers. Okay, um, let's go with uh, another type. I'm gonna do a density plot. Okay, so you can just copy this or do the use the get code. All right, so here's a density plot. It shows the distribution of Q1, Q2, T1, and T2. All right, and we can do other types of plots as well. We showed the box plot already. Um, and, and if you do subplots equals true, it just breaks it down into these individual uh, subplots instead of combining them all together. Uh, the other one that's it's kind of nice is this, uh, you know, KDE. You got uh, scatter plots. I use those often. 
Uh, but we'll show some other ones. Seaborn is also a nice package for be able to create these you know, very nice plots with just a couple lines of code. But let's go on to pandas profiling. Uh, this one's a, a nice one. Uh, I'm just going to include the link here. Uh, this one is a, a very nice package for being able to summarize the data uh, with just creating this uh, profile report. Okay, so I ran it once just to import the code. And I'm going to import the profile report. And I'll try to generate it to widgets. If that doesn't work, you can also do to file, generate an HTML file that you can open up with a web browser. And it's going to take a little bit of time just to uh, generate uh, this report. If you have a lot of data, then you may want to switch the minimal to be equal to true. OK, and what it'll do is it'll summarize. We'll look at some warnings here. OK, uh, reproduction. Uh, we go to variables. Here's Q1. It shows us a nice distribution. I'll make this just a little bit smaller so it'll fit on one page. There's Q2. It shows the distribution of values and some uh, additional information. Uh, there's T1. Uh, you can see most of these values are down here in the 30 to 40 range. And then T2 as well. All right, and then we can look at interactions. So I can plot um, you know, Q1 versus T1. I can see a positive correlation here. Maybe Q2 and T2. Uh, the heater 2 and the temperature 2, those have a high correlation. But I can also look at T1 and uh, T2. OK, so it's generating these uh, parity plots, these, these interaction plots. And we can also see this very compactly with uh, this correlation uh, matrix and, and be able to visualize it with colors. So 0 means very little interaction. And 1 or negative 1 means a strong positive or strong negative interaction. So we can see along the diagonal, of course, they're going to be correlated exactly with themselves. So that gives it a 1 value along the diagonal. And then the off diagonal, so Q1 is highly correlated with T1, which makes sense. The heater 1 is connected to the temperature 1 sensor. And heater 2 is connected to the temperature 2 sensor. And you can see this is a diagonal matrix. So if you have something down here, it's going to be the same as right over here. I can also look at uh, other types as well uh, of looking at the correlation between these. I look at, can look at missing values um, or sample. This just gives the head, the top 10, and the bottom 10 as well. So this is a nice report just to share some of the basic statistics, a little bit more than data.describe. Uh, and but it can take a while to generate, especially these correlation plots, uh, if you have a, a large amount of data. All right, let's go on to the next one, to matplotlib. OK, so um, I'm going to insert a cell below. And let's go ahead and just get code on this one. All right, so this one's going to do uh, generate a scatter plot. Uh, now, I didn't have any legend values here, but uh, I could uh, put in uh, something that would you know, give me a legend, or I could uh, put in something like uh, uh, scatter. OK, and it would show up right there if I included that as a legend. All right, so this is the, the you can do this with matplotlib. These plots are very fast to generate. And so sometimes if you have a lot of data, uh, it's, it's a good idea to use one of these just to be able to get uh, the data a quick plot. All right, then plotly is also very nice. Um, this one is plotly express. It's a simpler version than the regular uh, plotly. And these make very nice interactive plots. All right, so uh, you, as you mouse over them, you can see the values. You can zoom in on, on them. And there's other types of features that you can use here 
uh, you can download you can uh, box select lasso select uh, zoom in and out so it gives some nice controls here uh, just to be able to see um, you know the data how you want to be able to um, auto scale reset axes and and others so just with a couple lines of code you can use plotly express and and very similar syntax see the one before there's your data frame you select your X and your Y labels and then you show it all right now Seaborn is also very nice uh, it's built on matplotlib so it doesn't create these interactive plots but it does create uh, you know nice ones like the pair plots this is a, a, a common one that I like to look at uh, you know where you could see the distribution here of uh, between Q1 and itself it's just going to be the distribution of that variable and then you can look at uh, data for example in these scatter plots that show a correlation between Q2 and T2 you have a strong positive slope here and then also Q1 and T1 strong positive slope here okay and and the same same one is shown right here and then the other ones are not quite as strong so you can see where the the strong correlated uh, predictors are of these labels so these are going to be the features right here Q1 and Q2 and then these are the outcomes the labels that we're going to try to predict okay let's go down to a heat map now and we saw this with the pandas profiling but if you want to generate this yourself uh, you can do that as well go ahead and insert a cell below okay and if these are auto sc uh, scrolling for you for example if it makes a little scroll bar here and you want to get rid of that um, one of the nice things that you can do is just put some javascript code in here uh, and i'll just insert that uh, maybe at the top let's go up to the top um, and insert cell above so you can uh, change the IPython output area auto scroll threshold set that to a high number and then it won't uh, auto scroll uh, kind of like it's doing down here with the, the length of this it'll automatically scroll for things that have you know, a large graphic or something like that so I like to just set this to a large value so that we don't get any of the um, auto scrolling on the y-axis on the vertical axis here okay but here's our uh, correlation okay the heat map uh, we're looking at the the correlation between the data and we're just going to plot that as a heat map with Seaborn all right now let's go on to the activity this one's just a little bit more involved than this simplified you know, temperature control lab data. We're gonna use some uh, data that was generated from PV watts. Uh, in this case, for the south side of the BYU campus. And uh, we're just gonna import it and look at some of the data. And then we'll plot it and try to answer some of these questions that we had here. Like what factors are highly correlated with the DC array output for the watts? So the power that we're producing can we figure out um, you know things like ambient temperature how does that affect the efficiency or the total watts the power produced uh, and then what factors are highly correlated with cell temperature okay so something like degrees Celsius and then uh, PV cells are more efficient at lower temperatures so that's well known uh, does the data also show this effect why or why not so we'll try to answer some of these questions with this data uh, but let's go ahead and just first of all import the data okay so I'm gonna go ahead and import it and then uh, data frame head let's look at the the data and all the columns that are available um, I can insert another cell below and just do data frame uh, columns and that will show show me each of the columns sometimes I don't like this as a list so I'll just go um, for X in uh, data frames columns I'll just print okay so it gives me a list like this it's a little easier to see uh, each one 
All right, and then uh, these are gonna be some of them that are gonna be of interest um, that we wanna look at. Okay, so let's uh, just go through some of the things that we have already um, talked about here with, um, you know, try this yourself, see, <clears throat> see how well uh, it, it works. If you go through some of the examples that are shown above and uh, try to answer some of these questions with the, the data visualization. So what I want to do now is um, I only want to take a subset of the data. Uh, so I'm just going to remove the other ones. So I'm going to just say factors. All right. And then I'm going to copy it. So you have to do copy so it doesn't just take a slice of your data. And then if I look at the head, then I'm just selecting just these that I selected as factors. All right, uh, and then what I want to do now is uh, come down here and um, let's remove the rows where there's no sunlight. Okay, so um, in, in this case, it's going to be the plane of array irradiance. So for example, right here, there's just, there's no sunlight right now. So it really doesn't make sense to even calculate efficiency if there's no light hitting the arrays. So what we'll have to do is just say data equals, okay, and then I'm going to filter this out so where I say data, and then I'll have the plane of irradiance. Okay, that's going to be the label that I want to filter by when that is greater than 0.01. So I'm just going to select the subset of the data rows where that is true. And if I run it, um, then it just filtered those out. So if I look at the data head now, um, I can see that I've eliminated these with zero. And the only ones that are left are going to be the ones with a positive plane of array irradiance. All right, I'll come down more. So cleaned it up a little bit. Uh, let's also calculate uh, the efficiency as well. I'm going to create a new data column, uh, data efficiency, and that is going to be related to uh, the DC array output in watts. And then I'm going to divide it by the data and then this uh, plane of array uh, irradiance. Okay, so how much is coming in versus how much electricity I'm, uh, how much electricity I'm producing divided by how much power is available. All right, and if I want to just put this on a new line, I just do the continuation uh, character and I can run this and have another data head. And then you can see the efficiency is right here. Okay, so let me insert another cell. So I'm just kind of cleaning up the data, um, looking at it with these, um, you know, just uh, this data head. But let's let's do um, data dot describe. Just our basic uh, statistical analysis. Uh, and counting of how many there are. So right now there are 4,341 rows. You can see the mean value for each one. We're gonna pay particular attention to our efficiency. That's gonna help us answer some of these questions. You can look at the standard deviation, the minimum efficiency, and the maximum efficiency. So we get up to uh, about 4.05 uh, for maximum efficiency. Now. Um, we, do, we don't know the, the meters squared, so the efficiency should be below one. I, you know, in most cases, it's going to be, you know, like maybe 15 to 20 percent, maybe 25 percent, depending on the type of, of solar array. So it should be 0.15 to, to 0.25, but we don't have, uh, in this case, we didn't have the meters squared. So we're just dividing these, and the efficiency is higher, but, but that's okay. Okay, so let's... Um, look at a cell, uh, do a cell below, 
And uh, what I want to do is uh, let's create our profile report. Okay, uh, like we did before. Now minimal is false. Okay, so we've, we've created it, but we haven't generated anything yet. So now I'm going to do profile and uh, two widgets. So I saw that, that worked before, so we don't need to use the try uh, statement there. But if you want to, you could do two HTML to generate your um, report as an HTML file. So this one's a little bit bigger, 4,300 uh, data points. It's going to just take a little bit longer uh, to generate these. So let's go on while this is uh, working for us. All right, uh, let's also show a, um, a pair plot um, with, uh, okay, with, uh, pa let's see, I'm going to do a pair plot like we did before, um, and then we'll be able to look at uh, some of the data, like the ambient temperature versus the cell temperature. Okay, so you can see there uh, I'm, I'm using the Plotly Express um, to generate this interactive, and then I have a, a pair plot with uh, Seaborn. So here's all, here are all of my variables right here that show the correlation between these. And, and so the couple that I wanted to look at uh, are like efficiency, what has an effect on efficiency. So here's that third question right here, ambient temperature versus efficiency. So you can see that you know, ambient temperature, as it gets colder, <clears throat> the efficiency, um, let's see, is going to go up. Okay, so negative 10 is over here. We have a higher efficiency here. As it gets warmer, the efficiency goes down. All right, and we also see the DC array output. The text is a little bit small here. But as you see, uh, let me just put this all on one page here. Okay, DC array output. Um, I can see, you know, cell temperature as it goes up. Um, you know, it's going to have, uh, you know, more output, but the efficiency has, has, has gone down. So this is just because it's in the middle of the day. It's hotter in the middle of the day, and so you're collecting more power. Okay, this is related to the plane of array radiance. That's the maximum power that you could uh, get. Now, if you have you know less than the maximum, that means your efficiency isn't as good. Okay, so there are some of the values that are related to DC array output. Uh, and then also cell temperature. That's the other one that we wanted to look at. Um, you know, we can look at uh, the, the most obvious one is ambient temperature. Okay, so ambient temperature increases, the cell temperature is going to increase as well. Um, and then also is the plane of array irradiance, the sunlight, uh, more power is coming from the sun, it's going to also heat that up. So that's where some of the inefficiency comes from, is just the sunlight is converted into heat. Okay, let's come back up here just to look at our... our uh, the profile report, and we can look at some warnings, um, you know, the things that are highly correlated. So a plane of array irradiance is highly correlated with DC array output, which makes sense. There's, there's more sunlight, we're going to have more power output. Um, and then we have uh, ambient temperature has 290 uh, zeros, so some cold temperatures there. Okay, it just gave us a warning. I don't think that's a problem. Uh, but then we can look at uh, variables. Uh, we can look at ambient temperature, wind speeds, uh, array, radiance. Okay, there's cell temperature. Uh, there's DC array output and efficiency. Okay, so you can see the distribution of the efficiencies and uh, you know the factors. And in a future one, we could. Uh, do regression to try to predict efficiency based on uh, those factors. But let's look at the interactions. Uh, we have ambient temperature versus uh, cell temperature, for example. Uh, we have some correlations, and this one's a, a very nice one. The efficiency 
uh, you know, you have negative, so as it gets colder, the efficiency goes up. Uh, as you uh, go up in irradiance, okay, so a higher a throughput, uh, higher higher amount of watts per meter squared, the efficiency also goes down. It's probably because the temperature increased. The temperature increases, the efficiency goes down. The ray output, as that goes up, the efficiency goes down. So those are all probably correlated to temperature or maybe the maximum amount uh, that the solar array can capture. Um, and then there's others as well. We can look at the positive or negative correlations with those. Okay, we can look at some missing values and then there's our samples. All right, so this was a brief tutorial on data visualization. Uh, let me just come back here and, and show where we've, we've gone so far. Um, so we just gave an introduction on why data visualization is important and uh, how, these are just some basic tools to bring data into Python uh, to use some of these packages that are just with a couple lines you can be able to visualize a large amount of data, be able to see correlation, uh, see trends that you might be able to use to develop these uh, machine learning predictions and uh, and also just be able to look at for bad data with things like pandas profiling and be able to filter that out okay i hope you enjoyed this tutorial the next thing that uh, i'd recommend is just coming down to this uh, to the concrete strength example and uh, just work through this one on your own this first concrete strength on the visualization case study and then a second one that we'll do later is classification and regression with that same concrete strength data.